Bill. Hi, this is Marnie Pearson and Sue Painter, and we're back with the um, online business reality show, Marnie and Sue's Peep Show. And uh, Sue is coming to us live from Tampa, and she's got the ocean behind her. <laughs> yep. It's nice here today. It's Actually, I'm not in Tampa. I'm, I'm in Bradenton, south of Tampa. Oh. But, oh. You might, but you might can see the water behind me. It's like 82 here today. It's really nice. But we've got we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff to talk about because the world this is Cyber Monday so to me it's very appropriate that that we should be online on Cyber Mo Monday although I don't know if you've noticed Barney but I've noticed that a lot of the um, my internet system is running really slow today and I think it's because so many people are on have you noticed that in your place I, I had noticed it no you must have better internet service than I do then. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things we thought about talking about is all these Cyber Monday sales and are they really worth it? Um, and I and I took part in one today that Dan Morrison ran that was a uh, called a, a BC Blogging Concentrated Stack. I'll have to get the link for you guys in a minute and let you know if you're interested in it. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of Cyber Monday sales is you have to really look at the value of what you're getting and make sure that the prices haven't been buffed up and then dropped back down. So you have to look at what you're buying, whether it's online product or whether it's Christmas presents or whatever. Cyber Monday can be a good deal. It can also be a not so great deal, I think. So you just have to, you know, you have to pay attention to what the pricing was before and after. Right. I've gotten some good deals like from Amazon and stuff on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Uh huh. Have you been shopping today, doing Cyber Monday stuff today? No, I haven't. But <laughs> I have in the past. I've gotten good deals. Yeah. If you guys, if there are people listening who are online, let me see if I can find that link. Who are online uh, in the online marketing industry at all, and they and you're a person who likes to learn about blogging and um, uh blogging and podcasting and all that kind of stuff, then two of my friends, Dan Morrison and Rachel Martin, put together um, something today that is called a blogging a BC stack. And there's a, I'm, tr I'm trying to um, find the link for it, so I'm kind of messing around here. But anyway, they put together a huge, massive, stack of like 60 digital pro pro 60 digital products all about the online industry from blogging to podcasting to video casting to um, all kinds of stuff and so there's 60 digital products in this stack and you can get it for 27 bucks so if you want to go check that out today it's go to confidentmarketer.com forward slash big stack of help confidentmarketer.com big stack of help I think the sale might be going today and for the next couple of days but the reason I was saying to you about, about this morning is to me 60 products is more than I will ever use but for twenty seven dollars I will pick out the three or four things that are really helpful to me and then I'll forgo the rest if it was a hundred and twenty seven dollars I probably wouldn't do it but twenty seven dollars is such an incredibly cheap deal that if you don't use one product out of the sixty you know you've gotten a good deal on it so if you're into really learning and digging into what other people are doing and looking at how to information products then you might go look at that stack today and and if not no worries either so but sometimes Cyber Mondays are good deals and I think sometimes not so what else? What, have you, what did you do the last week? Did you take off or did you work real hard? Or I kind of took it off a little bit. I, I had been working really hard for the last couple months and I thought, well, it's going to be slow anyway, so I'm just going to relax and enjoy a few days and it was nice. So. Yeah. 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 I, I see that December is going to be busier than it usually is for me. And I'm, I'm not understanding exactly why that is, but usually in my world, where I do coaching and consulting, a lot of people kind of lay back in their businesses for part of the month of December and they don't really want to have appointments with me and they kind of put things on hold. Gosh, I have five new appointments this week alone. 
I don't know what the deal is, but it's like think people are kind of pushing. I think they see opportunity and they kind of want to capitalize on it. And I like that actually because I'm a big believer in working hard and I'm also a big believer in, in playing hard when I play. But if you want to take off all the way between Thanksgiving and New Year's in your business, then you're going to feel that two or three months down the road. And I think Marnie and I have talked about that before. You can't, you can't lay up that much when you own your own business. Or at least I don't see how you can do that. So I don't know, Marnie, what's your opinion about that? I would agree. You can't take all of that time off, probably, unless you've got some other forms of residual income that are coming in. You know. yeah. um, I used to do that. <laughs> Yeah. It was nice, but I had other forms of my advertising revenues actually went up in the fall, um, yeah. also the holidays and everything. So I could make the passive income to offset and afford. I, it. That's something cool to talk about. Like, how do you get ready to actually unplug? A lot of the times when you know when I travel, I pretty much stay connected because it just it's a part of me that. It doesn't take that long to do, and I can give it a lot less time if I'm on the road, if I'm taking a vacation. But I still, it's easier for me to stay a little bit plugged in than it is to try to make up for all of that when I get back. But now I have a trip coming up um, over Christmas. Bill and I are actually going out of the country, and we are not going to really have much uh, internet access during that time. So I'm already feeling the pressure of that. That means I've got to pre schedule my blog post, and I've got to get my team to make sure they're handling the social media posts. I've got to think about what's going to happen the first week that I'm back in January and you know how do I how can I pre-schedule and position that work. So for me to really leave it and get completely away from it for a week, that's a big deal. That's a big deal because there's so many different components of my business. And I know some people will say, "Well, you should be able to take a week off." And I can. But actually, I enjoy what I do so much that I don't particularly want to be away from it for a solid week. So it's just that blend of, you know, when you're on and when you're off. But to be a solid week without internet access for me, that's a big deal. I'm sorry if my face is, like, not, um, <laughs> you can't see me. I guess I won't sit out here again. I think there's too much light behind me and not enough light in front of me. So sorry. You get the ghost, the dark ghost of Sue today, and then you get the water in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were telling me about uh, Facebook is making some radical changes. Come yeah. On. I think there's a lot of things changing in the world, in the online marketing world. And Marty and I have said that over and over and over again. Um, but I'm seeing more and more indicators about that. And you know, Facebook put out a big announcement that as of, I think it's the 15th of January, they're going to um, not give you any organic reach at all to any promotional link that you post on Facebook. So in other words, I just put up a post a few minutes ago that said, <clears throat> Marnie and I are just about to go live on this Google chat and here's the link to join us. That's considered promotional for our business. So Facebook will not give that any organic reach supposedly after January the 15th unless Marnie and I were willing to pay to boost that post then or not pay to boost it but pay to make, turn that into an ad, a real quick ad, then nobody would see it. If that is really the case, that there will be no promotional links that get any organic reach, I honestly think that's going to kill Facebook for online industry. Um, because there are not people who are willing to put up five, six, seven hundred dollars a month in Facebook advertising, and it kind of kills the sense of community. Now, will those live links be good in private forums? I don't know. I don't think enough is really known about what that is going to mean. But if I can't go, I have a business page on Facebook, you know, Confident Marketer, just like Marnie, you've got one too. If I can't go on my own business page and put up a link about uh, something that I'm offering in my business, then why do I have a Facebook business page? If all I can do, if, if it is solely nothing but another uh, advertising mechanism and there's no organic reach at all, then I'll just go use something else. I mean, why would I just use, why would I use Facebook and pay for it just like I have to pay for everything else? And it's a shame because that sense of community will be gone. So I'm curious how they're going to tell what's a promotional link. For example, let's say I pass on a funny 
link to something on Buzzle or whatever, you know, how do they know that that's not a promotional link? Right. I, th I don't know. I think a lot of that has yet to be determined because to you and to me, that would be passing on a funny link. But, but what if people go through to that link and there's advertising, AdSense advertising on that link? Facebook, there probably is, right? So yeah. Facebook will view it as promotional. So, I mean, I have a Facebook business page so that I can be promotional. That's the whole reason of having the page. They basically are saying if you have a Facebook business page, you're going to have to pay for any promotional link. So it's a subtle way of saying you're going to start paying for your Facebook business page. Right. And if I've got to pay for it, I don't mind having to pay for advertising some. I spend a lot of money on Facebook. But I don't want to have to think that every single time I want to jump on there and say, hey, Marnie and I are doing a peep show. Join us real quick that I've got to buy an ad ahead of time to make that work. I won't do it. No, nobody's going to do those. Nobody's going to do that. Spontaneous posting. Well, you're saying they even have to pay if it's a personal, like a personal page? If there is a promotional link on a personal page, it's, my understanding is yes. That's what, you know, if I say to you, Oh, Marnie, look, I have a new iPhone 6. Is that promotional? <laughs> it is for iPhone. <laughs> How well are you going to know what's promotional and what's not? Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it because, I mean, I, there's so much that's passed on that's links to sites yeah. and stuff. That Right, exactly. So. Uh I don't, I don't see how that's going to work, but I guess, you know, time will tell, but a lot of people in the internet marketing world are, have seen that, and I, there's, if you, just all you have to do is Google it, and you'll see many, many blog posts and a lot of discussion about it, and, you know, maybe we can find somebody we can interview who can really tell us what's going to go on, Marnie, but I think it's yet to be determined, because Facebook is going to start it, and then I think people are going to it's going to really, it's going to stop things up. It's going to constipate Facebook in a way they've never been constipated before. I think so too. I think a lot of people are going to stop using it. Yeah. Well, people are stopping to use it. I mean, I know people who teach how to, how to, I don't particularly teach how to use Facebook. I mean, it's a marketing channel, but it's one of many. You know, my business wouldn't live or die without it. But a lot of people do really depend on Facebook. And a lot of people teach other folks how to build their business on Facebook. I've been saying to people for years now, build your list, build your list, build your list. Don't be thinking that all of those likes on that Facebook page are your list because they could disappear tomorrow. And in fact, that's just about what's going to happen, I bet. <laughs> so yeah, it is. Those people are probably thinking, well, what am I going to teach? If I can't really teach how to build up a public for free on, pay on Facebook, then what am I going to teach? They're probably scrambling around wondering what else they're going to do. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's tough when you build your business around a technology platform. Yeah. Because that platform changes and you're gone. You know, that's kind of the, what happened to me. It was like I built mine on Google ad revenue and gone, you know. Uh, I, I really think that um, people are going to have – I wouldn't be surprised if you see more people going back to regular mail. Oh, yeah. Regular mail and email – Email has really, although it's harder to get a good open rate, it, it has still over and over and over again proven its efficacy. Yeah. So. I, I'm really looking at doing some snail mail. for. Uh, I'm looking at doing an event in Salt Lake City in January. And I, I think I'm just going to pull my database and send like postcards about yeah. that event. I think that might get noticed better than trying to, you know, I mean, you pay what? Fifty cents, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars for conversion for a Facebook ad, mm -hmm. and you may or may not get somebody good, or you could tra target it down and send something in the mail that they can actually see, and you know they're probably going to touch. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. I was just talking to someone last week, and he he has done a lot of marketing online, and he has a local brick and mortar business here in in Bradenton. And he was talking to me about, you know, my instinct is to go ahead and do a snail mail postcard to, to this area and let them know that we've moved and what we offer. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So we were talking about how to buy a list, how to rent a list, and how do you demographically identify where you want that list to go. And I think that is a coming thing. Um, plus, it's just different. It gets noticed. 
And I guess, you know, it's what is a stamp now? Is it 47 cents for a stamp? I don't know because I always buy those forever stamps and then I don't know how much a stamp is anymore, which seems stupid not no, to know. I don't, I don't, is it 47 cents or? I don't know, but a postcard's cheaper, isn't it? Yeah, a postcard is cheaper unless it's oversized. Right. But, you know, if you're paying $1.50 a click on Facebook, then why the hell not use a 57 cent stamp and send something in the snail mail? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know? Things are really changing, and, and you really have to be in and up on that. And that's why Marty and I do these peep shows, and because we try things out. Some of them work, and some of them don't. And we talk more and more about, I mean, I have more and more people coming to me saying, I need to tweak my business. And that's why, you know, you're talking about doing a live event in Salt Lake City, Marty. I'm going to do two uh, one-day business intensives, one on January the Saturday, January the 3rd in Nashville, um, and I'm limiting it to four people. There's four people who can come to my home, to my personal home, and spend the day with me in a group talking about their business and what they want to do for 2015. And then I'm doing another one on Friday, December the 8th here in Florida at my Florida home. And again, I'm going to take only four people, and we're going to sit around the table all day long, and we're going to talk about what's going to work for you and your business for the next year. So those are two business intensive days that I have coming up and there is very, seating is very limited. You have to apply for it. Uh, two of the seats in Nashville are already taken and I think two of the seats in Florida are already taken and you have to reserve and pay for it by December the 10th because some people are waiting to make sure that it makes um, before they buy a plane ticket. So December 10th is the deadline. If you are interested in joining me either in Nashville or here in Florida at my home to talk about your business, then go to confidentmarketer.com and go to Working with Sue. Over at the top, you'll see the tabs. The very first tab is Business Intensive Day. And pull that up and look at it and see if it's for you. And if it is, reserve it and fill out the application for it. I think people want to sit around a table and talk about what the heck is going to work right now and what is not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, I think and that's what right. Are you think, what are you thinking about doing in Salt Lake City? I'm thinking of doing a live version of my how to, um, well, my product when how to create virtual products and programs. Yeah. You know. Okay. That'd I'm going to call cool. a little different than I. I'm going to try tweaking the name and just call it how to create virtual products and programs from your expertise. Now, will it be like a two day or three day event? I think it's going to take three days, and yeah. I'm probably going to do the first day that I normally teach in the virtual environment as a um, like a pre-call, you know, because yeah. you need to do a little homework to be ready to roll with yeah. the program. So I think I'll do it that way. That sounds cool. I'm about it, yeah. I, I have a lot of people out there, and usually if I do an event, I can fill an event out there. So I just thought, well. But if you go in January, you're going to freeze. You know that, don't you? I know. I know. <laughs> you don't mind the cold weather. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Are you a skier? Will you get in some ski time? I'm not a skier, no. But their cold doesn't seem as horrible as ours. It's it's a drier. Yeah. And our wet dampness really is what gets you. Yeah, I agree. Which is why I'm down here. I don't want ever to see another snowflake. <laughs> it's funny down here in Florida because people wear all these horrible little Christmas t-shirts and stuff and they have snowmen and like there's lights in the city that have little snowflakes and I'm like, why don't you have a tropical palm tree with balls hanging off of it or something? There's no snowflakes around here. Hopefully there's no snowflakes around here. It's funny how people dress and all that stuff and it has nothing to do with what goes on down here really. But anyway, it's interesting. So. Um, Marnie and I have been talking a couple of months now about doing a virtual workshop, maybe a two or three hour virtual workshop right after the first of the year about reinventing your business. Kind of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about when people come to my home in January, um, in early January. And I guess we need to get started doing that, Marnie, and see if we can actually turn these peep shows into something that helps us to make money and also be of service to the people who listen to it and who want to have more of our time. So maybe we need to think a little bit about that in the next few weeks. You get on it. <laughs> yeah, put it on your to-do list, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 
what else? I can't remember what was on our list to talk about today. I don't think we had any questions. Let me check real quick. While you look at the list and let me see if we had any last minute questions. Hang on a minute. Okay. Let's see if I can get if the my website is running so slow, so I don't know. Let's see. I don't no, see any we, don't any, we don't have any questions that anybody emailed in, and I can't tell from the dashboard if there's anybody who's joined us live. Can you? Uh, I saw a few people. Um, okay. Yeah, I was trying to see if there's... No, I don't have any questions either. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what else you want to talk about? Oh, I know. I saw a very interesting article today that said, "Is blogging dead?" Uh -huh. And if you want the link, to, if you want the link to the article, it's a big, huge, long link. If you want to the link to the article, go on Facebook. Go on my uh, page, which is Facebook forward Facebook slash Confident Marketer, and I put it up there and said. I'd like to see what people think of this. And this guy was just saying that, you know, blog posts get less and less comments, and RSS nobody uses RSS feeds anymore. More people are using aggregate sites like Tumblr, you know, things like that. And that it's just harder and harder to drive people to your site to to read a blog post. And I've noticed that. I mean, I blog. I have been blogging consistently at least once a week for almost ten years. I have probably almost a thousand blog posts on my site. And I've noticed I used to get 50 and 60 comments and now I'm doing good if I get three or four. I think people are coming but they're not commenting for one thing. But secondly, I think you have to take that blog post and drive it out onto social media and also email that link to people and get them to read it. So I don't know what your thought is about that, but I also think just like AdSense changed and just like Facebook is changing and Amazon sales are changing. Everything is really changing in the online industry right now. I do also think that blogging is changing, and it's not as easy as it once was to build a big following on your blog. But I know people who do it, but I think it's less and less. And what do you think about that? Um, the comments that I get most of the time are when I send an email that links to over to my blog, and I yeah. and I ask them to comment. Um, yeah. I think whatever they're doing with Facebook is going to, I think that's going to shake up something and something else is going to come out <laughs> from that. Uh, that yeah. Because um, if you can't post your blog to Facebook and get that, there's going to be, somebody's going to be in another platform or, <laughs> or, uh, or go to the platforms that are already there like Dig yeah. or Tumblr or some of these others. They're yeah. going to kind of become, or even, in, I've seen a lot of people move from Facebook to Instagram. I've noticed Instagram is big. I, yeah. I was talking to somebody that does um, network marketing. Yeah. She was saying she gets uh, a lot of new people for her business off of Instagram. Yeah, I mean, I have seen a couple of Instagram things lately, and there's the picture, but then there's like pair, a whole blog post underneath the picture in the comment. It's like people are taking their whole blog post and sticking it up on Instagram. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah, so I think that's a coming thing, so that's another little trend that I see. But I do think that, I'm not saying blogging will go away because I think people like to write what they write and some people like to read what other, other people's thoughts. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure that you can expect people to comment, all that thing of commenting and replying to the comments and then replying to the reply and all that. I don't think it's worth anything much anymore. Yeah, I think people end up commenting on the social media platform. Where yeah, it's I do too. I do too. Because a lot of times you try to comment and you can't because of whatever plug-in or technology they've got. You go and you write this thing. And so I've got where I won't even write one because I don't want to craft something and then go hit submit and the technology not work. Right. Or I have to go get some special account for 50 different. I don't like that discus for that reason because it never works and you have to go create an account. And then I just, I don't like it, so I don't use Discus on my website, but I know a lot of people who do, and I tend not to comment on their sites, honestly. 
And I'll tell you another technology thing. Maybe this is an anti-technology day for us. <laughs> Here first, Marnie and Sue, anti-technology today. Um, just kidding, really. But um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, I know. I have had three or four people. I'm constantly being asked to be on podcasts lately. And then people throw me into their time scheduler, their automated time scheduler. And I'll say, okay, well, I'm available at this time. But their time scheduler forces you to give them three different times, even though you've actually agreed that you're only, you know, you're available this one time. So then you have to give it three different times, and then it schedules you at a time when you're not available. So then you've got to go back and email them, and you've got to say you've got to go in and time and change your time. I hate those time schedule pro programs. I tried one once. Nobody can control my calendar as well as I can control it. I know what I can squeeze in and what I can't squeeze in. And I do not like that stuff. It's too lockstep and it's not flexible enough for me. And I'm finding that I'm servicing the time scheduler instead of the time scheduler servicing me. And then I have to take time to go write the person and it's their podcast. So they're doing the podcast and I'm doing all the work of getting it set up. I don't like that. So, I haven't been into the one that gives you three choices. I've had, I, got, I had it today. It was called Time Scheduler, I think was the name of it. And it made you pick three times. Hmm. I even put a note on there. It's, you could do a comment. And I said, I can't do all three times. I can only do this one time, but your system made me do three times. Sure enough, it emailed me and said, you've been assigned this time. That was when I couldn't do it. It's just stupid. So anyway. Huh. I'm not a big fan thing. Well, I guess we're almost to the end of our half hour, and I know we could sit here and talk all day about all this stuff we see going on, but um, but it's good to see everybody after the Thanksgiving holiday, and it seems like for me at least December is up and running, and I guess, Marnie, it is for you too, and um, we will see you next week on Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday at 1 Eastern, Marnie, next week. We have the schedule for the rest of the year. Yeah, we got them scheduled. Um, I can check really fast. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if I, I might can pull it up on my phone. Okay. My phone is working a lot faster than my computer is, that's for sure. I don't know what's up with that. Tuesday, 1 Eastern. Yeah. Tuesday, the, Tuesday the 9th at 1 Eastern? Mm -hmm. Okay. We will see you guys then. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.